anybody can do it. I mean, if, 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 they can, if they can just overcome the addiction. Many people in Washington will tell you that the crack epidemic ended in the late 90s. But according to Sergeant Lou Daigle of the Los Angeles Police Department, crack sales are stronger than ever. Um, basically on San Julian, you can come and everyone's selling. I mean, everyone will either, either be a, act as a hook for you and it can bring you to a, uh, to a buyer. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the buys go on intense. Um, we've even had intelligence that, you know, gangsters will come, gangbangers will... I mean, basically every gangbanger comes down here to make money. Right. Okay, they come down from the inner city, they come down from East L.A., they come down from everywhere, all the different rival gangs, and very rarely, actually, is there a shooting uh, between gang members. Although Freeway Rick remains locked up, many people still blame him for crack's easy availability. One time, uh, I went over to this lady's house to drop her off some drugs, and it was the look that the little boy had in his eyes, you know, as if, man, you're taking food out of our refrigerator. You know, we're not going to have anything to eat. And I thought about it, I said, man, I was putting him in the same position that I was running from. You know, I basically was running from poverty. That's basically how I got tied up in, in, in the drug business, because I never wanted to be a drug dealer, you know, when I was growing up. At one time, I even wanted to be a police officer or a firefighter. I think the drug war is going to be lost. You can't win a drug war by prohibiting things that can be made in your bathroom with stuff bought from a grocery store. Back when I was in college, we used to cross the Mexican border to buy pharmaceutical speed. We thought it was strong, but it was nothing compared to the crystal meth of today. Sergeant Daigle spots a man smoking meth out in plain sight. He may have been tweaking a little too hard to realize that he was using directly in front of the police headquarters. Uh, what about uh, the, the, the methamphetamine? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Blackouts, um, um, yeah, psychosis, illusions, uh, cutting my wrist, things like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's been Seeing things, demons and stuff. Pretty realistic? Very realistic. <laughs> Today, the DEA claims that crystal meth or ice is the new epidemic replacing crack because of how long it lasts and how cheap it is. Oh, meth is much better. Meth is, uh, you get more energy, you can do more things, you can uh, last longer. Flying over the Mojave Desert, it's hard to imagine that a modern day drug epidemic is taking place in rural white America. Hey, what are you in here for? What am I in here for? I'm in here for possession of dangerous drugs. Which was? Um, which was methamphetamines. Methamphetamines? Are you selling or just... No, I'm just, just a drug addict. Just a drug addict? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, do you think being in here is helping your addiction? Left, 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 right, right, left, 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 right, right, left. I read a real bad coke habit, and um, I felt like methamphetamine saved my life, man, because, you know, I, I didn't have to... I didn't have to use coke anymore. I fell asleep with the wheel pulling out of my parking lot of my house, and I woke up to the police being there. And underneath the seat of my car was 11 cents worth of, of methamphetamine, and they, they convicted me of that. In Phoenix, Arizona, a single man has created a kingdom from fighting meth and other illegal drugs. With four landslide victories under his belt, very few sheriffs have enjoyed the job security of Sheriff Joe Arpaio. What is this, a documentary on drugs? You either love him or hate him. And in Phoenix, if you hate him, you keep it to yourself. Don't touch that or you'll yeah, you'll, it's electric, you'll die. Oh, okay. We don't screw around here. This isn't Texas. <laughs> All right. The reason I'm the toughest, because see these guys, right? Yep. Pink, where's your pink underwear? I got them. So see them. How come they're fading? They don't got no new ones for me. I asked Mr. O'File, they just don't got them. Can we just start with you just like telling me your name and who you are? I got to tell you in front of these guys, they don't know who I am. <laughs> Joe Arpaio, Maricopa County, Arizona, sure. This is the largest tent city in, in the United States, probably in the world.
I would almost bet half of these guys are here for drugs. You see this? They can only mail postcards, did away with their envelopes, and on a postcard, that's me, we put the uh, inmates in the, I mean the dogs in the air-conditioned jail, and these guys are in the hot tents. It says that while inmates live in a hot desert tent city, rescue dogs live in air-conditioning comfort, right? Let me sign this. Everywhere I go, I sign these things for these guys. I spent uh, 32 years fighting drugs around the world. I was a director in Mexico, South America, had offices in Panama, worked with General Noriega, had offices in Argentina. I was the only federal agent in the Middle East. Now we have armies out there. My job in uh, Turkey, I've lived in Turkey, was to stop the French connection. And we did stop the French connection when I was a director in Mexico. We arrested the top guy in uh, Asuncion. Although he and his men still arrest people for crack, a newer drug has long since taken the lead. We have a big methamphetamine problem right here. You can't blame Mexico for methamphetamine when we see 50 laboratories right here in this county. Well, what is it about crystal meth? Yeah. Methamphetamine is easily made. You can make it anywhere in a motel room, in a car. That's one reason. And methamphetamine, I mean, it's all chemicals, you know, and it, it, it's, it's the one that it's the epidemic of, of Arizona. I know that for sure. Of Phoenix and Mesa, Tempe, Chandler, all the surrounding areas. I know it's an epidemic. Is it a sign of the times that the newest drug can be cooked up from common substances found at hardware stores and pharmacies? During the 1920s prohibition of alcohol, bootleggers profited by cooking moonshine, a very dangerous homemade alcohol. In prohibition, the government forbade legal booze. People created moonshine. Is crystal meth the modern day moonshine? What we ought to be doing with regard to methamphetamine is we ought to be engaged in a real educational campaign to tell people just how dangerous methamphetamine is. Don't you think the drug war could be kind of held responsible for the fact that meth has become so popular, the fact that it's harder to get cocaine into the United States because of the drug war, now we're giving a rise to synthetic drugs? No, 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 no. These guys will use any drug they can get that has no bearing on it. Can I ask them, who would rather do cocaine or, or speed? Tweak. Speed. 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 I'd rather tweak. You guys do speed? I love it. Yeah. Why do I think it's become so popular? I mean, it keeps you going. You can work a long time. You can stay awake. Have great sex. What's it come down like? What's it come down like? I don't know. I never came down. <laughs> Heroin makes you nod and get in traffic accidents. Uh, marijuana makes you sit on your couch and speed puts you in the fast lane. That's your opinion. As governor of the state of New Mexico, um, half of what we spend on law enforcement, half of what we spend in the courts, and half of what we spend in the prisons is drug related. Self made millionaire Gary Johnson shocked the citizens of New Mexico when, after being re elected to a second term, denounced the drug war and tried tirelessly to introduce harm reduction strategies. Former Governor Gary Johnson's in this film. Who's what, he? What? He was the governor of New Mexico trying to legalize drugs for eight years. Oh, yeah, that's, the, that's why he's not the governor anymore. Well, he was eight years. Um, <laughs> but what do, you, what do you think about him? What do you think would happen to America if drugs were legal? Well, you know, that guy. I, in fact, if I knew he was going to be on your camera, I probably wouldn't even be talking to you. Because that's a defeatist attitude, this guy. That's right, New Mexico. The, you should never have a defeatist attitude and give up because you say you can't solve a problem. So let's give up on uh, bank robberies and let's make everything legal. The way I look at it basically is, is that we have gotten to where we've gotten today and I think it's because of politicians and drugs have become the easy boogeyman to, uh, to put all blame on. I'm the only politician, if you want to call me that, that will tell it like it is. The judge ordered me to go to treatment and I'm not able to go to treatment so this is the, what I'm getting instead, chain gang and county jail. Are you afraid you're going to... I'm afraid I may if I don't get into a drug drug rehab right away, like within the first 12 hours of my release. Are we going to ever eliminate uh, methamphetamine use? No. But can we reduce it? Yes, and we can do that. Through